two hot news videos in one day? Yeah, you're welcome. I apologize for the delay in yesterday's episode. As I mentioned, food poisoning got me something fierce. It's been a terrible week for me as far as how much time I've spent in the bathroom, but I'm here. You're here, and it's time for hot news. So let's start off with some YouTube complaining. This isn't the first time it's happened, just an update, but it appears that YouTube is continuing to clamp down on creators that make videos advertising that they're live on Twitch. It first happened to Linus Tech Tips about a month ago, but on Wednesday, there was a more recent report by a user named Cerny who had his entire YouTube channel shut down because of a video in which he promoted his Twitch stream. YouTube is citing a violation of their spam policies since the only purpose of the video is to drive users off of the website. The odd portion of this is that while that policy has been on the books for years, it appears that it's only a recent enforcement issue. Linus and crew had been posting these video updates to inform people of the WAN show for years, but only got tapped by YouTube with a strike back in June. It's another rough content creator move by YouTube that likely does little to endear people to their platform. As LTT tweeted, yeah, this action makes me so motivated to stop streaming on Twitch and switch to YouTube right now. Hey YouTube, stop doing this. It only hurts you in the long run. By the way, cheeky little plug, I'll be streaming on Twitch this weekend, so go ahead and give me a follow, twitch.tv forward slash UFDisciple. And then in news that a ton of people have been raving about since yesterday, Apple has updated their MacBook Pro lineup. Plenty of people see this as a welcome move since the discarded fruit company updated to the 8th gen Intel processors for up to 6 cores and 12 threads, 32 gigabytes of maximum memory, up to 4 terabytes of SSD storage, true tone display, and the T2 coprocessor for Hey Siri support instead of using a dedicated keyboard shortcut for Siri like a peasant. However, just because some people are enthused doesn't mean everyone is. There's plenty of complaints to be had about how they still have failed to update the I.O. to at least include an SD card reader. I mean, this is a pro lineup. Professionals will be using it. Where's the SD card reader? And they're in still instead advocating the dongle life. And then there is the price. While the entry level models are just the normal Apple tax levels of high prices, when you start adding the higher capacity SSDs, that's when it just becomes downright right insane. Kitting out the 15 inch model to its maximum specs leaves you with a final price of $6,699 with the four terabyte SSD taking up $3,200 of that extra cost. Rip your wallet. It also appears that with this update, Blackmagic has decided to announce their external GPU in collaboration with Apple. Blackmagic, in case you didn't know, makes cameras as well as a great editing software, more used for color correction, called DaVinci Resolve. It's actually probably one of the best free editing softwares you can get. So the Blackmagic eGPU features the Radeon Pro 580, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, HDMI 2.0, four USB 3.1 ports, and 85 watts of charging. The eGPU will set you back a cool $699 and will be available on Apple's website and in select Apple stores. It's not that terribly high of a price considering that a few months ago RX 580s were going for $699, but just don't expect that you can game on it because of, you know, that super generic joke that Macs don't support games. Hashtag got them. LG is expected to provide three to four million OLED panels as well as 20 million LCD panels for the iPhone later this year. They're also expected to sign a deal for the six and a half inch OLED panels in 2019, bumping up their production to 10 million OLED displays next year. And then just the last bit of Apple news. I'm not bringing this up because it's super important, but just because I didn't even know this existed. Apple will be discontinuing their photo printing service. If you want Apple to print off your pictures, you have until September 30th to place your orders. Seriously, I had no idea that they did this and they've been doing it since 2002. And then speaking of news that nobody had any idea about, Blockbuster. Yeah, apparently they're still around, but as of this coming Monday, they'll be down to just one store in the US. The last store in Bend, Oregon states that they have no intention of shutting down anytime soon, but I mean, holy crap, I thought they were all gone, like Toys R Us. I mean, geez, 90s kids, all of our favorite stores from our childhood are dead. Rip our nostalgia. And then a couple of Intel announcements now. Intel has apparently acquired the company eASIC to help develop their FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Arrays, and ASIC divisions. Obviously, the first thing that pops into people's minds when they hear ASIC 
is crypto mining. And in fact, this isn't the first news we've heard about them get potentially getting into that field. Back in April, we had a video discussing a patent application that Intel received specifically for Bitcoin mining. So this could be their attempt at developing that further, or it's mainly for their FPGA business, such as those fancy new $500 G-Sync HDR modules and videos throwing into their new monitors, which are powered by Intel FPGAs. It's most likely that latter option, but Intel getting in on the Bitcoin mining game is, you know, an exciting, interesting prospect. So we'll have to see how this plays out. And then they also announced the release of the Xeon E2100. It's a Coffee Lake based Xeon with six cores, 12 threads, the same boost clock as the 8700K, but just has support for ECC memory and no unlocked multiplier. So if you want a Coffee Lake 8700K Xeon, now's your time, folks. And now it's time for today's segment of Local is Lekka. So today, right here in South Africa, the 64-dish Meerkat array was unveiled. It will be the largest and most sensitive radio telescope in the Southern Hemisphere, at least until another South African project, the Square Kilometer Array, is finished at some point in 2020. The Meerkat array has been under construction since 2016, but all 64 dishes were completed this year and were finally unveiled today. The radio telescope array will have multiple uses, including testing Einstein's theory of gravity, as well as searching and investigating new and exotic pulsars. Let's go, South Africa. Science it up. And that's it for today's episode of Local is Lekka. I tried. I tried. I, I just can't do it. Yeah. Rickus, come do it. Just come tell everybody how to say it. That concludes this segment of Local is Lekka. And speaking of other South Africans, it appears that Elon Musk has taken upon himself to help fix the lead contamination crisis that's been happening in Flint, Michigan. I won't go into all of the details here, but in 2014, the city changed its source of drinking water, which due to lack of water treatment resulted in over 100,000 residents getting lead in their water. The government is currently working on replacing all of the lead contaminated pipes, but that project isn't expected to finish until at least 2020. However, on Friday, Papa Elon made a statement on Twitter expressing, quote, please consider this a commitment that I will fund fixing the water in any house in Flint that has water contamination above FDA levels. No kidding, end quote. Good guy Papa Elon strikes again. Obviously, this tweet doesn't expressly state how he will go about this, but given just how quickly he was able to have a child-sized submarine fashioned for the Thailand soccer team rescue operation last week, even if it wasn't used, it doesn't seem outlandish that he and his team would, would be capable of helping to resolve this issue. But then this brings me to the best headline that I've read in months. This one comes from CNET and it states, quote, Elon Musk is turning into the Nickelback of tech, end quote. With the sub tagline of, Nickelback was one of the most popular bands in the world until the world decided it hated Nickelback. Remind you of anyone? I, I'm just gonna leave that there for your thinking pleasure and take it no further. And now it's PC Tech Time. I'm your host, Brett, and let's just jump right into all of the computer hardware related topics we have for you today. Buildzoid has put out a 45 minute breakdown of his thoughts on the B450 boards that have been announced. If you don't know, Buildzoid is an amazing PCB ana analyst, so if you're interested in the technical side of what makes a good motherboard and what makes a great motherboard, or which one you should consider if you're into overclocking, I'd recommend that you give his video a gander up there after hot news, of course. Then we have a report out of ASCII Japan speculating that AMD's seven nanometer Vega 20 GPU could crack the 20 teraflop barrier with just 400 watts of power draw. Now, obviously this is speculation, but it is based on some pretty solid math. They estimated the die size of the Vega 20 GPUs from pictures, since we've seen those, Lisa Sue is holding them up at events. And from that calculated the transistor count based on the reported density increase that comes from switching from 14 nanometers to seven nanometers meters, which leaves us with roughly 88 or 96 compute units on the new Vega die instead of the current max of 64. Then based on power efficiency and performance gains that also come from this node change, we can speculate that AMD might have a 20.9 teraflop monster on their hands here if they decide to go for maximum frequency on the GPU. This would be absolutely insane given that Nvidia's best card, the Tesla V100, only manages 15.7 teraflops. We'll obviously have to wait and see if this turns out to be accurate, but at the very least, it does appear that AMD might have something good on their hands with the seven nanometer switch that's incoming on both the professional side as well as for gaming, hopefully sometime soon. Speaking of future GPUs, we have good news that it appears that GDDR6 might not be as expensive as we all dreaded it might be. It appears that DigiKey has posted pricing for their GDDR6 memory modules, and the price difference 
isn't absolutely huge. One of the major issues that we've seen with GPU pricing is that VRAM prices have gone up over 40% within the last year. But the jump from GDDR5 to GDDR6 is roughly only 19%, which is pretty cheap considering that's from seven gigabit per second GDDR5 to 14 gigabit per second GDDR6. So you double the bandwidth of your memory for only 19% more cost which will still likely result in higher GPU prices when Nvidia launches the 11 series, but it's not going to be an insane amount more like some rando rumors were speculating. And in case you're looking for better pricing on stuff, it appears that Razer will be selling things pretty cheap on Prime Day, which is Monday, July 16th. They'll be cutting 25% off their Razer phone to bring its base version down to just $500, as well as giving a discount of up to 40% off of various other peripherals on their store. So be sure to check them out on that day if you're interested. Also, don't forget to check out UFD deals on Monday as well, because we'll make sure to bring you all the hot deals to one location so you don't have to go doing the digging yourself. But in even more exciting news than a cheap Razer keyboard, it appears that CD Projekt Red has confirmed that there will be more Witcher games coming. The CEO of the company stated in an interview that he feels as if the first three games wrapped up a nice trilogy, so there won't be a Witcher 4. But quote, this does not mean, of course, that we will leave the world of The Witcher. The Witcher is one of two franchises on which to build the future activities of the company. Today, unfortunately, I cannot reveal anything more, end quote. Obviously, it's a bummer that we didn't get exact details, but did you hear? New Witcher games. After Cyberpunk 2077, I'll have something else to wait multiple years for. Yes. And then in also exciting news, it appears that worldwide PC shipments are up for the first time in over six years. Yay, we're not in a dying market anymore. PC master race forever. The growth isn't massive though. In total, 62.1 million units were sold in the second quarter of 2018, which is a paltry increase of 1.4% from Q2 2017. The units in question are comprised of desk-based PCs, notebook PCs, and ultra mobile premiums like the Microsoft Surface, but does exclude Chromebooks and iPads. There's no mention on crypto machines in this study, but my guess is that those aren't counted since those typically are component sales, not overall sales. They're packaged by companies that likely wouldn't make it into the Gartner survey. A lot of this could likely be driven by the fact that we finally have firm competition in the CPU space with Ryzen providing a valuable alternative to Intel, especially considering many people were still using Sandy Bridge based systems. Thanks AMD. But we can all celebrate. Long live PC gaming. Let's continue to help the rest of the world see our greatness. And speaking of greatness, I'm gonna wrap up hot news there. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting me in this rough week of sickness, which has been absolutely terrible. Hopefully nothing bad at all happens next week and then I'll be back for a full five days of hot news. Don't forget to hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed it. Please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I am Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Cheers.